What is up guys, Zach in here. Rick in here. And in today's video, we are gonna show you how to comp properties, find ARV, the fastest and most efficient, best way for wholesaling real estate. The truth is, if you're spending too much time finding ARV and comps, you're doing it all wrong. Like really within five minutes, you should be able to figure out the ARV comps and all these things. What we wanna do today is really show you exactly how to find comps, how to find ARV the correct way. And then exactly what we're gonna do is actually show you how to comp properties to live in front of you because that's what we do guys. So uh, if you're ready to go, we have comped what tens of thousands of houses. Uh, we, we've been through a lot. Too many. Uh, too many to count. And so we've been through a lot of this. And what we're gonna do is kind of give you a systematic step-by-step -step guide on how to do this right now. So comping ARVs, your first question is going to be, you know, what are comps, right? And comps are basically a definition. They are short for comparables. And the, the best way I explain comps is if you think of a signed Michael Jackson thriller, you know, vinyl from the 1980s. It's like, that's pretty cool, you know, yeah. to the right person. But like, what is that thing worth? Now, who knows, right? I have no idea what it's worth. You have no idea what it's worth. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to go online and just search that search term, you know, Michael Jackson signed thriller vinyl. And then we're going to look on eBay. We're going to look at what they're selling for online. We're like, okay, they're selling between $150 to $200. That's for the last 15 of those I'm seeing. It's like it's because what we're doing is we're finding comparable ones. And then we're just finding the value yeah. from that. It's not complicated. It's pretty simple. It's like a pawn shop. If you walk in a pawn shop, they bring in something strange. You see these TV shows, it's like, let me get an expert in here and uh, let's see what they've sold for recently. So it's the same thing. We always think about wholesaling, just like the pawn shop of real estate. So if a pawn shop has to comp, so do we. The key thing is we're going to teach today is we're not going to do it like a realtor does. We're not going to spend five hours comping one property. But for the most part, you've got to identify motivation first and that's never going to change. So we're teaching the technique, the skill of comping. It does not replace the skill of building a relationship with your motivated seller. So remember that as we're shooting this video. Yeah. So what are comps, right? Comparables. And so when we have a property that is under contract, guess what we're going to do? We're going to find comparable ones that look the same, right? And that's basically what we try to do here, you know? And then kind of the next part is like, what is ARV? ARV stands for after repair value. Now I have a very controversial take on ARV and, and what that means and, and what that is. Uh, but ARV is after repair value. So basically what is that is the value of the piece of property after it's repaired and after it looks nice, right? So my controversial opinion is, this is facts though, you know, you look at ARV after repair value, right? So it's what the property is worth after it's been repaired and the value of it when it looks all nice and sexy and great, right? Now, everyone tells me, you know, what, what's ARV mass repairs, all these things. And really, if you take the A, R out of ARV, it's just present value. And so your property right now, you kind of have to do the math here. You're going to figure out my house is right now worth $100,000 on the market. Now, if I put 50 grand, it'll probably be worth 150. Mm -hmm. That's ARV. So you look at your house, say what repairs need to be done on the property, add the AR. So the value of the house, let's put some repairs. So after repairs, that's what the ARV is. The best definition for ARV really is what is the house worth on its best day if you make it, make it all look nice and sexy, right? Bingo. I'm not That's... talking about inserting a pool. I'm not. Yeah. I'm talking about like newer roof, new nice new floors, new kitchen, new bath, stuff like that, right? And nothing too crazy or insane. But I think like the challenge out. here is this is where a lot of people get it wrong. ARV simply because it's confusing. Like it's the highest and best use of that property if you think about it. And sometimes you have to put $50,000 into a property just to make it livable, like foundation issues, roof issues. And just because you put 50 grand in a property doesn't mean it's going to be better. So think of your ARV as the highest and best use. Don't ever confuse it with the as is value right now. And I find everybody defaults to the ARV. Some properties, they already in their highest and best use as a rental and they're never yeah. going to get better. So make sure you define the ARV and the highest and best use. Because some properties, when they're ugly and they're a bad location, nobody wants to buy a retail and it's only going to be a rental, 
don't try to think magically 50 grand is going to make it this special. This is where a lot of people have screwed up on the uh, the short-term rental markets. We're not talking about that today, though. No. So ARV, it's an after repair. Right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So if I have a property, and we're going to show you this live today, right? I have a house. You give me a house. One, two, three, Maple Avenue, right? This is what I do. This is what I tell our people who underwrite our deals. If you send a deal through sellmypaper.com, just they usually go through this exact like thing, right? It's just step by step, right? Yeah. Because it's so easy, anyone can do it. You know, it's so easy a guru can do it. Like that's how easy this formula is. Like, I mean, even they can do it. And they haven't even done a wholesaling deal in 14 years. So let's talk about this, okay? Number one, construction type. When we look at the house, we like to look at the construction type. Four or five construction types on most houses we deal with, right? We're gonna have brick houses, we're gonna have wood built houses, we're gonna have manufactured mobile A frame type houses, concrete block, and then if you get like really, really old, right? There there are some weird like how do, I don't know how to describe it, like like they're like plastered, um kind of clay not clay, but like you don't they, deal with a lot of those. They're, they're kind of those like weird, really weird offset shoot style. Like most of your house are going to be those five, right? I mean, there's some others, but like for the most, for yeah. the most part, they're going to be like that, right? The northeast mostly wood, uh, southeast is going to be wood frame, and then some concrete block, kind of where the hurricanes are. Out west, mostly, um, I would say a lot more concrete block actually, but there, there are some stickville houses there. Um, same thing for the northwest. So like wherever you're out in the country, the construction types are pretty much similar. But if you have a brick, a nice sturdy brick built home, don't compare that to a manufactured home. It's a different house. Yeah. Like, d d it's not comparable. Okay, it's like having a, um, you know, Whitney Houston signed vinyl and a Michael Jackson. Like, they're different people. Okay, Th those aren't comparable. All right, you, j you just got to figure that out too. You know, it's same thing like a signed football. A signed football from Tom Brady is going to be a lot different than a signed football from Josh Allen. It's just they're different football players, right? Yeah, and and most of these are like, as we say, all real estate is local. Mm -hmm. Usually in a local area, there's a traditional way, and that's what you'll find in that area. So if you have all wood frame homes up in like the Northeast and someone built this ginormous like concrete home, it doesn't always mean it's going to be to compare all the others. So just look in the area and see what the predominant type is, and that's, that usually helps you out a lot. I, I agree. And so the next one is bed and baths. When we have these type of properties, what we're going to do is look through the bed and baths. So if I have a three-bedroom, two-bath, Look for other three bedroom, two baths. If I have a two one, do another two one. Two two, you can do it. So like when it gets in the weird ones, like I get properties that are like a, I had one that was like a three three. I'm just going to compare it to a three two. Like, I know yap, yap, yap all you want to me, but like yeah. it just, you have to do the closest one. Most houses are two ones, two twos, three ones and three twos. And then you get in the four threes, the five threes, five fours. And then you just go up from there. But Unless like, you have certain areas, it's like a five one. I'm like, show me. Yeah, I want to see five, a five one. So, Let's use that example really quick. You know, when, when we're in we're in Florida here, so there's a lot of different cultures that come here. Um, there's a lot of immigrant uh, families that will move in, and one person uh, buys a house, and what they do is decide to bring their whole family, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But they buy a two one, and what they do is that they got a buddy uh, who's in construction, and they're they're kind of sick of everyone, and so what they get the buddy to do is just create walls. You you can do it technically. It's like a rat maze, and and, and they and they basically create three extra bedrooms unpermitted obviously and it's theoretically a five one right convert the garage everything and, and so you got to look at it's really a two one that that got converted into a five one and so what do i do here it's like oh do i compare it to other five bedrooms no that's stupid no. okay what you're going to do is when in doubt go off of square footage and, and I, i'll tell everyone this square footage is going to be prop it's going to be king and you know I see a lot of wholesalers that they really like try to go, Oh, but this, this one's just as nice as mine. Oh, well that one's 2000 square feet. So a lot of people get confused here in comping that. Yeah, it's a nicer, it's a way nicer house, but it's 1500 square feet in this nastier house is 2000 square feet. The 2000 square foot house is going to win yeah. all day, every day. Square footage is king here because you can always change condition. You can't really change square feet. So you can change bed and baths. They can't square. So if you have a house that's 1,200 square feet and every other one's a 2-1 and yours is a 5-1, don't be like, oh, I did my calculations and uh, my house is worth way more than any other two. No, it's square feet. Go from there. I, I've seen a lot of wholesalers 
they get in trouble for that, right? A couple things on um, first beds. If you see a disproportionate amount, like five bedrooms, one bath, it's screaming. It, it you can only comp it as an income property. When it comes to baths, a lot of times you guys, you know, one bath, two bath. What about two point five? Half a bath indicates it's just a toilet, no shower, no tub. So just a little clarification when you see it. I didn't realize this when I when I first started out. I had no idea what a half bath was. So um, when you see two and a half, it means it should mean toilet only. Yeah, you get the half. I, I, I and so. and there's some places where it kind of makes sense because not everybody, like if you have a guest place, you have people over, they're not typically taking a shower. So if you're having a get together, that's where half bath comes in. So you, you're going to see it more in condos and townhomes than you're going to see in regular houses. I agree. But remember guys, square footage is king. Square feet. It's all about square feet. Not all about it, but it, it's going to be the most important one. All right. And, and when I look at these type of properties uh, that we're dealing with, you know, if it's 2,000 square feet, just look at another 2,000 square feet, roughly what they're selling for. You got to remember, comps and ARV, it, it's just a, it's a quick guesstimate. All right. Like you're not going to be perfect here. Do not be doing this. You, you, most of my stuff's a range too. Like, like when I'm looking at a property, okay, it'd probably sell between like, <laughs> If you're like in flip their cluster or whatever, and I get sent properties every single day, like, what do you think this thing's worth? Everyone gets mad at me at first because they're not used to how I do it. I'm just like, eh, I mean, Airbnb's around 230, 245 mm, with the repairs. I would say just get this thing locked up like 175 or below. Yeah. And people get really like, when I talk to acquisitions managers and a lot of these things, like, especially when I'm looking at the podium or whatever, I just put, I'm like, get this thing under 175. It's like, wait, what? I, I'm stupid simple with my wholesaling. But the reason is because if you lock it up for 150, I know you'll probably make 15, 20 grand. That's the idea. And, and so the point is just get under 130. Because when I go in the appointment, uh -huh. I'm not talking about square feet or construction type. And then we give a low ball. So 150, let's low ball around 110. See what happens. And then just know I can't go above 150. So make a decision. Do you want to be a realtor or do you want to be a wholesaler? Exactly. Realtors or spend all their times on comps. Wholesalers spend their time finding distressed properties and finding solutions to make it work. Here's a little hint. If you have to pull a calculator to figure out your offer, you're most likely paying too much. 21 years experience, I'm telling you. Every time I whipped out a calculator, that's when I got in a little bit of trouble. I'm talking specifically on single family homes. Don't. If you have to use a calculator, it means your margins are way too tight and you're trying to make it work and you're trying to force the deal. Whereas... If he says just off from 75, even if you pay 90 and it's worth 150, then you know you're going to make money. It's just a question of how much. I agree. So square feet is king, guys. And so next year, condition, obviously, like a really nasty beat up house. So there's outliers with your comps when you do them. There's going to be houses that are like, whoa, like really disgusting. Worlds with foundation issues that get sold for super, super low. And there's other houses that sell for super, super high. That's an insane condition, right? You got to look out condition here. And then probably the, the other thing I like talking about is like year built. If the property is built, I, I, I like about 10 year gap. And what I mean by that is make sure it's not new construction, but like if the house was built in 2005, I like to go from 1995 houses to 2015 houses. Just as it's a rough range. Uh, it's usually for older houses because those are usually the houses I deal with from the 80s, 90s. Uh, old there's not 90s, but uh, I'm talking about like 60s, 70s, 80s. Like it was built in 1964. I'm going to do 1954 to 1984. I'm not, sorry, 19, 1974 to 1954. I don't, because until you get in 2002, it just, there's a difference. Um, it's not a crazy one, but you just got to be careful with that. Um, that's honestly what I found for running comps here. Now, some really important things here. All right. You have to avoid, and this is my biggest problem with people's comping. <laughs> Avoid a positive mindset with your comps and have a pessimistic or just kind of hoping for the worst mindset. And I, I know it seems really weird what I'm saying. It's true. But a lot of you wholesalers, well, that you you want Wish. the property to be worth more because you locked up for 120. And it's then you, you start trying to grasp at straws that aren't there. And what I mean by that is oh, I locked this thing up for 120. I thought the Airbnb was 150 and I'm, I'm running the numbers now and I'm like, oh, wow. This house sold for four hundred grand on the street. Wow, that should that's you know what I think I get four hundred for this. Mm -hmm. And like you have this positive mindset, and I'm not going to have a pessimistic mindset. Let's, let's change that. You know, 
I, I think you, you need to have a facts mindset. And, and what that means is a lot of you guys are, are wanting the property to be worth more. I, I know it. And you have a tight deal and you're, you're trying to find some evidence to show it's worth more. And the only evidence is the, the free market, right? And, and the problem is cash buyers deal with facts. They don't care that the 4-2 with a pool sold for 400. It's like, well, you don't have a pool. And that thing was built in 2022 and yours was built in 1974. It's just like a lot of guys are trying to grasp for straws and, and try to, you see the good, but you avoid the bad. And I'm not saying it's you specifically, but so many wholesalers do this. So many wholesalers, they, they just only look at the good and they mm -hmm. don't look at the bad. Mm -hmm. It's like a really bad girlfriend. You know, <laughs> you, you look, you look at the looks, that's all you care about. And then the, the bad stuff you don't even look at. And then you end up in a world of hurt. So you got to look at the whole picture. Here's the truth of, of doing wholesaling for 20 plus years. The more time you spend comping means you're searching it. Have you ever had that friend that ask you a question and go, Hey Rick, um, what, what do you think of this business idea? And you go, it sucks. It's terrible. Like, I, I, and you know what they do? Instead of taking that information, they go to the next one. Hey, what do you think of this business idea? And no matter how many people do it, they're searching for someone to validate what they did. And they'll ask as many people as they possibly can until it matches their expectations. And there's a term, a, there's a term for it. I'm not going to use it on air. But that you guys are doing the same thing in wholesaling. You're going to keep hunting. You're going to go to Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, until you find a cop and go, aha, I've got it. It's a deal. You can't. Your first glance at it, as painful as it be, just be honest with yourself. I overpaid for the damn thing and I got to fix it. But some of you guys go deep in the hole and you want to know why you struggle in the beginning. You're better off doing this way. Though. So here's the clue. If you're spending a lot of time comping, you overpaid for the property. So if we lock it up a little, I like to use conservative values and if the comps higher, guess what? It's a windfall for you. You did excellent, but I'd rather you not tie up in the crappy deals and waste all your time. The more time you comp, the more you overpaid for a property. I'm on facts all the time. Like somebody, someone came up to me for an idea. You know, I don't know if they're trying to be an investor or not, but like, they're like, I have this idea for this bar <laughs> that you bring your dog to. It's like a dog park with a bar. <laughs> I like that. And I was like, okay, well, it's going to cost you $3 million up front. You got to do all these things. And you got dogs running around with alcohol. Okay, great. I literally just I asked one question. I'm like, do you, is there any local ones within an hour and a half that is actually becoming successful? Yeah. They're like, uh, no. And I'm like, so do you think there's a reason why not? <laughs> and, and the truth is, it's like, if you want to open up a pizza shop, there's a lot of good pizza shops that do well. And so there's, there's saturation, mm -hmm. but the problem is you might want to get something that's not saturated, but maybe there's no demand for it. Right. It's like trying to wholesale a house with, there's only 500 people living in it. Yeah. There's no competition, but no one's going to want to yeah. be in there. And so it's like, I only go off of facts. And so the same thing happens in wholesaling. Okay. You think your house is worth 150? Well, show me other similar houses that have sold for 150. Well, I think it will. I, that ain't going to cut it. You know, I, that ain't gonna, oh, well, you know, one 14 miles away. So I ain't going to cut it, man. Um, and so like a lot of people, like they, they try the best and they try to look for the best. And I'm always the guy that's like, I think it's worth less. Like I, I'm always on the, it's worth less side. And the reason is I have, pro I have deals and I swear to you, this is the funniest thing ever. And you, you, you it's always a, it's always a good thing where the property a cash buyer thinks the thing's worth 200 and I do my numbers and I'm always on the pessimistic side. I'm always in the, ah, this thing is, and I think, ah, this thing's worth, it's on a dime worth one, 115. And I offer 80 and I lock it up for a hundred and I'm like, all right, I'll make a nice 20 grand there. Yeah. And then go to you and you're like, Zach, this thing's worth 200. I'm like, what do you mean? That, that's, the and, and, and then we make like 80, 90 grand. And I'm like, oh, I thought it was worth 120. <laughs> You know, I, I, yeah, I know that one sold for 220, but like, I just didn't know a hundred percent. And guess what? That mindset has always pushed me because I was so stupid to just think it was worth 120. Cause I'm always have that fax mindset of like, if it's not a hundred, I'm just going to go lower. And I just, then I go for a crazy low offer 
And the thing is, when I offered like 90, I'm like, I know I'm only making 30. Like, it's not a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm completely confident in that 90. Like, I'm not, the problem is when you think it's worth 200 and you offer 90, it's like, would you take 90? I was like, would you take, yeah. like, I, I thought it was a tight deal. So I, I, was, I was offering it like I was barely making any money. So think about this if you're beginning. It's, it's like a golf game. Like, I'm a terrible golfer. I enjoy it, but I'm terrible at it. I have bad habits. And it's hard to correct old habits, especially if you don't want to. That's me. Because I enjoy golfing. I don't love golfing. Now, when Zach started out wholesaling, I said, Zach, just get the absolute lowest price. Go for no. That's all he knew. That's all I taught him. And it's completely ingrained into him. So if you're starting out, if you will adapt our philosophy of getting the lowest price using the go for no, all the methods we teach at freewholesaling.com, it's amazing. It is more challenging when you guys have had a couple of years out there and you've, you've Use this other methodology. Use the way we do it, guys. Especially if you're just starting out, it is wonderful. Yeah. So avoid that positive mindset, guys. Now, if we want to learn some free tools, I would say Redfin, Realtor.com, Zillow.com. They'll give you the solds really well. Now, there are some non-disclosure states, and I do want to let's go do it in order here. And so, there are some non-disclosure states. Let's let's copy them really quick. So we got them all here for you. So there are states that unfortunately with the free tools ain't going to work. Um, these are non-disclosure states right here. And so what non-disclosure states mean is these are states that do not show their sold prices. So you can't find comparables that sold. Kind of crazy to me, um, but they don't. And so what you have to do is get MLS access, which usually charges a lot of money. Then you have to be a broke realtor, 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 realtor. Broke a tour, whatever you want to call them. Um, but like, you, you, that's what you're going to have to do, right? And so, unfortunately, you kind of get stuck there. Now, the good reason is you can use like a paid tool software that actually has access to the MLS sold comps. These are going to be my favorite ones are going to be listrei.com, zachdata.com, and dmzach.com. Now, if we're talking about comping specifically, zachdata.com, I have found is the best comping tool, hands down. Now, there's more than that though, right? There's quality uh, lists. You can be trying for dollars app, skip tracing. And you, th- there's a lot here. Like you could choose from the plethora of all of them. You, they will all have the same sold comp data. It's just, I think Zach data comes a little easier because of the way that I comp, I comp like a crazy person. What I mean by that is if I have a three, two, and then the one down the street, like same street two weeks ago sold. And it's the same exact house, except that one had a pool. I will literally use that as a comp and just take out the cost of the pool because it's literally on the same street. It's the same type of house, same thing. Mm-hmm. I will do that. Now I'm a little crazy, but I have personally found that like location super important. And so if a house sold on the same street and yes, it was a little nicer, I'm going to, I'm going to discount it. Same thing. I've had deals and you, you'll find this all the time where the neighbor's house is like, so they're both three, two thousand square feet, same construction, but same builder, except that house sold on the MLS two years ago. Now this is controversial. I will probably take a discount or in a subtraction, see the difference between prices two years ago to now. Mm-hmm. And I'll use that as a comp. Now I know you're going to scream at me for that, but it's the, some of the best comps you can. And then hands down the best comp is what the property sold on the MLS for, for the past five years, hands down all day, every day. And so if your house sold for 185 on the MLS three years ago, you know, and it, there's no new construction, nothing there. You have you, you have a rough guesstimate. It could be up to 195. It could be down to 175. But you know, you have a general ARV range because that's what is literally on the market. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people got spoiled over the last three to four years because they were insane appreciations. That guys, that's not the norm. A lot of people are making projections every year. I'm going to 30, 40 grand more. No, that that's not the norm in real estate. It's going to go up, but Please don't take the last three years and go, okay, that's how it's going to go for the next 20 years. I don't think it's a realistic approach and it's going to hurt a lot of people. I agree. I, the problem is you just got to, you just got to be guessing on, not guessing, but a very good estimate on this. You can't be perfect on your comps. I, I put it, I tell everyone go on a shot clock, two or three minutes at most for ARVs. Yeah. Just and like what, one of the easiest easy. techniques is, Throw out the high one and throw out the low one and just take the average if you have, you know, four or five comps. It's that's not always possible. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what we do. So we find 
bunch of properties. This two thousand two hundred thousand. This sold for fifty uh, one hundred fifty grand. Divide the sold price by square footage, and you get a price per square foot. Get the average, and then go from there. Don't tell Rick, but you need a calculator for that. But, some, uh, but, so, <laughs> but sometimes you guys just cherry pick the top and ignore all the other ones. You, if you do that, you're just going to be disappointed at the end of the day. So if you're going to pick one, make sure you pick the low one, the high one, get rid of them, and then find the middle. You're good to go. And so like, I can give you more rules on ARV and comps and all these things. But like 10 hours. The, the truth is the simpler you make it, the better. Mm -hmm. And the point is, yeah, find your ARV, find your offer price, but just offer as low as you can and doing the right offering strategy to be good. That's why people watch us. They're doing 40, 50, 60, 7, 80, hundred thousand dollar plus deals. And why we do it because we don't focus on ARV comps right now. We do focus on it at our company, but we we're not like in stupid insane about it. Right. We, we take more time with the seller and trying to get the lowest price possible on it. Uh, and so just stop the, 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 my piece of advice for everyone. Stop acting like a realtor. You're not a realtor. You're not listing the house. You're just getting a rough range and then offering really low in there. That's not That's an insult. Point. Like a realtor is a realtor. Top dollar. We're very different. We have a different, we're looking for motivated sellers to help them out in their situation. The realtors are looking to sell properties for retail at top dollar. That's it. So don't be one. I agree. And so what we're going to do now is if you have a property, and you want us to do some live comping on it, comment below and I'll look at the house and we'll give you some quick comps real quick. And uh, we'll, do, we'll do a freeway and we'll do one a paid way if you want. Uh, you let us know and we'll uh, comp your property right now. So uh, you know exactly how I kind of come up with my head. Wholesale copy. You guys are mixing this up with like realtor copy. Yeah. Because we would need about two weeks to get you the exact answer. I agree. It's true. Drives me crazy. And so let's see what we got. Um, let's see here. And then also got some good questions here. Um, but yeah, let's wait and see. Also, FYI, for, for you guys that do Zillow for sale by owners, do not be this guy that's like, okay, the Zillow Fizbo, it's been listed for 200 days. It's not been sold. And um, let's see here. Um, it, it's listed for 150 but I think the ARV is really 300. I, there's a secret. It's not. The MLS is the best comp. If the market has chosen, it's not worth 200. It's not worth 200. Okay. So uh, let's get some good ones here. Um, I got to be careful. Our YouTube live on Tuesday actually got taken down. So I am going to re-upload that on Saturday the correct way. Um, but YouTube did take it down. So we got. I, I'm not going to mention addresses actually. Um Actually, I will. this one's in Bethany, Oklahoma. All right. So I'm going to pop that up. If this live gets taken down, I swear I'm going to go crazy. Um, so I'm going to be actually careful here. So let's search this up and break it all down. So where is it? Um, here we go. 222116. Pay like that Jeopardy theme song behind it. No, I'll be good. Okay, so we got is it North? All right, cool. Oh, Avenue. That's nice. All right, let's go to my favorite website in the world. Okay. All right, here we go. So, Are we allowed to share this? We'll see. It's so painful what you can't show. Oh, it's, it's insane to me. Come over to Flip with Rick Plus. We don't have to deal with this. Oh, I agree. All right. So, uh, all right. So, let's see if YouTube. So, is this 2116? Is this the right one? Let me see here. 2116. Okay. So, I'm just being. I'm just being honest with you. Like, looking at this deal, what do you think I'm going to say? Uh, uh, you look at this. What do you think, looking at this, I'm going to say? I don't even know what I'm looking at yet. I just see the previous sold price. When was it sold? Is there a date on that? It was just sold. November 14th. Yeah. It's this, this isn't going to be It's like less though. than a year. So, what do you think I'm going to do? It sold for 135. 
There's your comp. So like a, the, the comp is the house. Unless, is it gutted or anything? Is it, did he give me any zero information? Zero info. So guys, if, if there's something that drastically affects the value, you got to put it in the comment with the property. And so just looking at this thing here. Remember, data doesn't lie to you. You can, so you it's can. It's guessing 208, but if the thing sold for 135. We have no idea. But so it got listed and got sold pretty quick. So maybe it's worth a little more possibly, but like I, that's going to be your best one. Yeah, hate to say it, like it's pretty simple. Uh, all right, we're gonna another one in Indiana. But here's a problem: unless you have like intimate knowledge on something going on the property, if you buy a property that's been traded, definitely six months or less, it's really hard to make a wholesale deal. Someone really had to screw up real bad, and this accents more than ever. You've got to make sure you're dealing with motivated sellers, or it doesn't here's make thing, sense. It's gutted. Was it gutted when it sold? Or did it get bought and gutted? Now, here's the thing. If that property got bought for 135 and then you gutted it, it's probably worth less. Unless it was like a hoarder's type, hat, right? Well, so we need to just get more clarification when you guys put it well, in here. Well, this is an example. They bought the house. Yeah. Now it's gutted. Maybe they... It's it sold and then it got gutted. Is it worth less when it got gutted? I would say yes. Well, it depends. That, you know, what if they got gutted? rid of all the kitchen, even if it was a bad kitchen, if they got rid of that, it's worth less. Could have been a leak. Could have just been outdated. Like there's more, so just a little they more bought information. It and they gutted it. Who so, gutted it? The person that bought it. Let's see if we get pictures. So here's my next rule. When you buy a piece of real estate and it's gutted, unless it's coming from like a true wholesaler, Ask yourself, why would you buy a property, gut it, and not finish it? Or they, they didn't have the money. They yeah. The money. Or it could be a bigger underlying problem too. Mm -hmm. And that problem is going to become your problem. You know, these like this, when you see too many red flags, like just don't waste your time. So especially if you're brand new because you- It says it was a hoarder's house. Yeah. And those are the worst. They usually have electrical problems. They have plumbing problems. It, it just never stops. So if I'm brand new, I would just steer clear even on this property. I wouldn't even spend time doing it because it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make logical sense. Everything is going on and it's traded within less than six months. And if you don't have the skill set to understand it, you could get in trouble real quick. And based on the numbers, figuring it out, you know, what, oh Lord. I don't know. Is that it or that's, yeah, that's another the house? But they gutted it. This is, uh, a year ago, though. Yeah, I mean, you can just pick through the garbage. Like I, I could do an entire two-hour show on that one. So I would say here, yeah. I mean, honestly, though, like, yeah. I mean that that's uh that's pretty bad. I mean, but like it's so. So I would say. So this is my personal opinion. If the house, even though it's a hoarder's house, still I know it's nasty. So Hoarder's House has has three different levels, in my opinion. There's this is really bad and messy. Two, there's rats and mold and poop and feces. I've heard them in the walls there. And then there is, uh, I can't breathe and I, I instantly throw just it knock away. it down. So th those are the three. Now what I'll tell you is, let's do a theoretical in this house. Let's say it's the average Hoarder's House. It's nasty. There's rats. There, there's number two going on everywhere in the house. It's still worth more to have the dirty, nasty kitchen and toilet and in place and drywall than it is to tear it all up and just have nothing there. I've seen a hoarder house cost 50000 just to get them back to normal, get the drywall out, the electrical, all the rats infestations, and get the moisture out of the house. I'm not even talking about the cosmetics. I do not like hoarder's house, and then whenever we deal with them, we literally sell them as fast as we humanly can. I don't want anything to do with them. They will never work out hotel and they are a nightmare to rehab. I sold one time. It took the guy two over two years to rehab an 1800 square foot house. Yeah. So I'm going to say no on that one. Uh, let's see here. We got one in Decatur, Alabama. All right, let's do this one. Five of five. You guys can come along with us. Remember, I'm not a realtor. So if you're going to keep me and Zach to realtor standards, I'm going to massively disappoint you because we're comping for wholesaling. We're just trying to see if the deal is worth moving forward. But before, 
<coughs> I even do this. If I go on an appointment, I would take a look at it is I'm going to find out if there's motivation. I just don't want to waste my time doing this. Well, we're just strictly talking about the comping here. So we've yeah. got this house right here. Uh, they said it looks vacant. Knocked over mailbox. Garage is broken. Okay. I love the knocked over so mailbox. It seems like a motivated property here. Now, we have a zero bed, zero one bath. It looks like it's 1215. If we have no info here, we're going to go after what is king square footage, right? So this is a 1215 square feet house. Now, using other ones and so roughly this is just me roughly looking now zillow has some cool tools looking at the map here what's number three the one's like right on the same street right three is going to be uh briar avenue Close. 1407 square feet okay 92 a square foot roughly right now we got some this one sold for eight months ago for 147 a square foot right 82 a square foot 78 a square foot, 105. I would say 92 is probably the, the best guesstimate range on there. Um, now, I got to look at conditions, but I'm doing this in under a minute. Like if I had to go really quick, I would just say, I would just say, let's give it 95. Give me nice. 12, um, that's showing 115. Seems a little low. I got to look at the condition of the house. And so it got rented out for two grand a month. That's actually pretty good. So let's use some, let's look at some comping here. Let's actually put this property on like um, prop stream. I remember guys, when you use comping tools, especially a, a paid software, you still got to use your brain in it. It's still a computer and it's giving you the tools. And then I like to go in and if, I'm very close on the numbers. I'm going to go in and just pick the correct comps and I'm not going to cherry pick the highs and I'm not going to just make a brutal, you know, pick the lowest one. I'm going to go with the most conservative. Now I always stay on the, the low side because I can't get hurt doing that. If you're teetering towards the high side, you got to understand, do you want to feel good in the short term or do you want to be a successful wholesaler? Because getting a signed contract does not guarantee you make money. Getting a contract at the there's, go for no price. There's, a, there's an REO. We'll get it. 2018. So using these comping tools, right? Oh, look. Same street. 507. There you go. Literally next door. Sold for 90 grand. That's not good at all. That was 1,300 square feet. That would be your low. See, that one says it didn't sell. That's crazy to me on Zillow. But this one says based off of their, the, what is this based off of the public records? Okay. We got another one for 190. That was the one I was talking about. MLS for 190. So that was 130 a square foot. I mean, if you're at 130 a square foot on this one, I'm going to pop a calculator out. Don't be mad at me. 130 times that's 1215 puts that one 158 range really got to see the condition of these and that, it always comes down to the condition of the interior guys it it's and that's why you want to start low and then if you had to increase your price it's a much easier conversation if you offer too much it's a painful conversation so this example right here this one sold for it says 606 and it's a thousand square feet that's an outlier i'm going to avoid that some of these are packaged. sold as packages now, this one's pretty good too. This is an MLS 199, 1300, one for 152. That's a nice looking house right there. Let's see if the MLS details are on here. No MLS details, obviously. So, what, what I like doing is you can do this. So, this is one thing. Uh, Batch is the same one too. So, you can use any of these softwares for them. But, like, I can just add one. So, this one's very similar. I'm going to click that one. I'm going to click this one because it was close. <clears throat> Mine was built in 1965, but there's not really any 1965 one. So that's going to be a, a, an issue. Now, we're going to any similar ones. This is the most similar one for 199. We're going to add that one in there as an average. And then this one, MLS sold. This is in the 80s. We're going to add that one in. And we're roughly 120th square foot. Let's do that. All right. Sounds good. So, 
120 a square foot for our comp. I like the 90. What do you mean 90? A square foot? Yeah, but it's uh, ARV. So I'd say 145, 150 most likely. Um, I'm always on the conservative side on these, but I've, I've seen some 90K comps. And so it jumping from 120 to 175 estimated value, I, I don't really believe that. But hey, who knows? And it got publicly sold for two grand on REO. I'm assuming it's a little worse than we can think. So that's roughly um, A or B comps on there. Uh, but yeah, you can use any paid software on that. Listari.com is great. DMZack.com is great. Zack Data, they're all going to be good there. So um, yeah, let's see what other questions we got here from everyone. Um, but yeah, comping, it's not as complicated as you might think. I think everyone really wants to make it a crazy thing. It's really not. Now, if you do want to learn comping the right way, we also have millions of live examples at freewholesaling.com, our free wholesaling course. We shout a wholesale real estate step-by-step, -step, absolutely, for free. So uh, let's see what other comping questions we have here. Let's see here. Guys, you got to use your brain when you comp. You use tools just like you use AI, but at the end of the day, you, you've got to go through and make sense because all real estate is local. I agree. Uh, we're going to ask a good one here. How do you know if you should wholesale the deal or wholesale it? What's your one. opinion? Um, so here's how I look at it. It's you look at what you'd get on your regular assignment of contract. And then you decide what you think's worth it. Because listen, wholesale is more work. The reality of real estate in general is the higher you go up in price, the more effort it's going to take. So that's why we love wholesaling you in, get out our efforts in the marketing. And if that's your skill set, we'll make a lot of money. That's great. As you go up, you got to put up with more levels of conversations, more scrutiny, and you're going to get that on that. So I would require at least a double return. So if I was going to get a $10,000 assignment, a wholesale, if I could not make 20, I wouldn't consider it. A lot of you guys, well, 10, I can make 13 if I wholesale it. That's if everything works out perfect and you're not considering all the costs involved. A lot of times you got to pay a realtor involved, plus your holding costs and carrying costs and you got to fund it. So an easy rule is two times. So if I was going to make a $20,000 assignment and you're thinking about doing a wholesale, you're going to have to net for net 40. Do you understand that? It's not about the, I'm going to get 40 and you minus all four years. You're going to have, you're going to have expenses with it. The most important thing in a wholesale, if you're ever going to do it, and we're not doing a whole thing, is you want to be from the day you bought it to the day you sell it, 90 days or less. You go, well, that's that's plenty of time. Yeah. Trust me, it goes by very fast. And a lot of times people will fall out of contract because they're inspection or whatever, and you got to have time to find another buyer. So that 90 days was quick. That 91st day, just sell it as fast as you can. Because if not, you're going to wind up being a fix and flip and fix and flip are speculating and they do that for a living and they're specialized in it. We're not as wholesalers. So I know that answers your question, Jason, double, double your money and it's worth your time. If not, and then if you don't have the funds to do it, you've got to sign the contract anyway. So be honest with yourself and what you're doing and figure it out. But wholesales are still work. They do take time and they do take capital. I agree hundred percent here. Um, let's go here. Mark has a good one. He said, these guys know their stuff. I'm learning everything. Just watching all the videos every day. And they tell us exactly how to wholesale. They tell you everything and watch them in order and subscribe to all the channels. Listen to what they say and you'll be able to wholesale. That's, I like it. Uh. Here's the thing. Go to freewholesaling.com. We literally have a 30 day wholesaling challenge in there. Help you out really easy and quick. 30 days. Simple as that. Subscribe to these YouTube channels. Come and ask questions. Uh, we actually do free one-on-one -on -one calls we're going to do next. And we have everything you need to succeed absolutely free. You don't have to spend any money. Get your rich wholesome. That's the point. And send me a deal. Sellmypaper.com. I'm here to make some money, guys. Okay? Send me some wholesaling deals so I can flex on some more wholesaling gurus. You know? I do more JV deals in a day than these gurus do all week or a year. Nah, or a month. Some of them. We just like doing deals. I like doing I'm more. addicted to it. I love it. Um, Christopher's got, hey, Rick. I have an REO that an agent is showing. Comps are good, but when I walked the house, the foundation clearly needs work. He wants a deal under contract before I have a contractor walk it. Yeah, so Christopher, I'm from a guy who's 
the only sweet spot I ever found in REOs <clears throat> was basically 2009 to 2012 because that was the one anomaly in the market where the market was flooded with like motivated properties that the banks took back. Here's the problem with the REOs. They control all the rules. So they're trying to sell you a major problem and they don't want to give you they don't want you to investigate it. Also at the closing, you're going to have to sign a hold harmless. You cannot go back and sue the bank, anybody involved. It's completely one-sided. And on top of it, they're probably going to give you a 90 day resale restriction to discourage people from flipping REOs. And quite honestly, for those reasons, I would walk away from it. Think about this. If I was selling you a car, I said, Zach, Zach, I know you love this car. Don't open the hood. And what, what's your natural inclination? Open that damn hood. I want to see what's going No, no, no. I'm giving you this price, but you can't open the hood. It means they're hiding a problem for you. And the problem is going to be massive. So if you, if you can't underwrite what the problem is <coughs> for a property on open market, that is a massive problem for me. So I wouldn't do it. The restrictions are crazy. I don't do many REOs. I did do a lot of REOs, but once again, from 2009 to 2012 is the only time I've seen in 21 years that I would even consider buying an REO. There's people who specialize it. They make a little bit of money. They take a massive amount of risk and it doesn't really fit in the wholesaling range. Now a fix and flipper will do an REO, but they're not going to like this problem. Foundations are major. And if you can't research it and get a number on it, you could be taking on a much bigger problem than you anticipated. I agree. All right. So let's see here. REO stands for real estate, uh, real estate owned. It's basically property that's owned by the bank. They took it back in a foreclosure. All right. So, <coughs> okay. So let's go here and answer some one-on-one -on -one calls we got. So uh, let's go here to wholesaling houses for real. Let's see how you can hop on, talk to us for free, step-by-step. -step. So uh, the best way to do it is go to wholesaling houses for real, our Facebook group. Let me show you how to do it. Let's go here. We have 130,000 people in the group. Holy moly. We're about to be 131. It's a lot of people, you know? Wow. That's, it's actually insane to me. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we got all these people on here. So uh, pretty cool. So best way to do this, if you guys want, just go here. When you're in the group, click the featured right here on the top. Click the streamer link and you'll be able to talk to me and Rick absolutely for free step by step. So let's talk. Let's get it going. Help me help you out. Kevin, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you guys doing? I'm blessed. How can I help you out? Awesome. Um, so I was curious. So I, I'm trying to start virtual wholesaling, or I'm trying, I'm starting virtual wholesaling um because I'm moving to Tennessee here in a couple months. Um, and so I'm going through their public record. I'm trying to get into their um public records and everything, but they have a service where they charge um it's like $250 for six month access and like a setup fee and everything to get into their um, software. And I was curious if you guys ever run across anything like that. Um, and oh, yeah. what, like, you know, are you, you guys to pay for it or is it just kind of like, are there other ways to get around it? What does it entail? So it's basically like, uh, it's all their public records. So it's, it's, you're, you're basically paying for using the system to get their public records. And so initially I'm like, okay, I, I don't see why I wouldn't pay for it, but I know that you guys have mentioned that, you know, when you're getting public records, it's like, okay, they're, they're free. So and they're telling me that if I go inside there, which I'm in Texas right now, so I can't go there. Um, if I go there, then I can get them. I have to pay for the copies and everything. But if I want to actually like, you know, have software that I can look up online and get, you know, the liens and the probates and so forth, I have to pay for the service. Okay. I mean, there's multiple options here. Mm -hmm. oh, you go first. Okay. I mean, you can ask for court dockets if you want okay. to do that. Then they have to show you that, right? You can basically do they have a court case search? Um, we have to pay for I, that. It should be public. I, I so I, I think a lot of this stuff is public. They have like they have a privacy policy. Like so, like if you want to get into any of their their public records, they can show them to you in person. But if you want to if you want them to email them to you or print them out to you, you have to pay for the essentially you're paying for the copies. Okay, so if I ask them, can I get a list of all the liens being recorded? You have to pay for it. So yeah, I was asking him that and he was like, he, he was telling me that, um, I mean, I, I can do that, but I, I'd have to, you know, I'd charge you per page for- So I know, can't personally look it up. Right, yeah, no, unless, unless so, you use the software. So for example, if someone just 
let's say Devin sued me and mm-hmm. I want to look up the case information. I have to pay 250 bucks right. to look up my, my case. If you want to look up it from like your laptop, but if you want to look it up there, they'll, they'll like show you the what actual uh, Knox, Knox, Knox County, Tennessee. Knox County. Yeah. Try that out. Cause if you can find it and that'd be, even, that'd be even better. Cause I, oh, I was down on the website. Yeah. I mean, this is a small trend that's going around the country. It's, the fact that they charge for public information that you and me both pay in our own tax bills right just blows my mind because you're already paying for them and like they're putting a premium service on it so at some point someone's going to bust these people open because it it i don't think it's right but we also have to weigh you know what's your time worth too and i, right. I don't want to get so in the weeds of free 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 exactly $250 is in the, the bigger scheme is a minor amount of money. Do I think it's right? I think it's absolutely wrong and it's ethically morally wrong, but right. I don't run these, these counties in these cities and it's ridiculous because the, the constant fight between public and private and privacy policy, it's, it just, it's getting convoluted and suddenly now you got to deal with the privacy to get to the public. And it's, it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Now here's a little trick that I've learned that you guys want to make note of it. When somebody gives you instructions saying, listen, um, for me to do that, uh, like for me to email you, I got to charge you per page or whatever. Go do me a favor. Can you put what you just said to me verbatim in an email and send it to me? If they don't send you the email or they give you blowback, they're usually messing with you. They do it all the time. And, And this isn't just in this county. It happens all over the country. Because they put it in writing, now you can, if you want to fact check it or send it to their boss, and they go, listen, I just want to know if this is factually correct information. And they'll go, why do you want to know that? Stuff like that. People do lie to you. I'm going to be honest. So if it sounds so weird in your head, you go, can you do me a favor? Can I get that in writing in an email from you? If you never get the email, it's usually because they're working you. So, right. But I don't want to spend energy. I know we, me and Zach used to talk about FOIAs for years. I've kind of gone away from that. Because they're so used to the four-year request, they don't even care anymore. And it's not its not a threat. Okay. For full disclosure, I have never, ever once applied for a four-year. I don't have time for it. I'm just going to find another way to get around to it. So Zach will look it up, see what we can do. But I'm just not, at the end of the day, you have to make a personal decision what your time's worth. Absolutely. If the 250 bucks saves you like 100, 200 hours, it's $2.50 an hour. Right. I think it's right. I think it's ridiculous. But now I have a lot of people I work in like Tennessee. So what I would do is um, when you get over there or like you're going to get very intertwined in the community, Definitely. you'll figure this out quickly. So, so here are the court dockets for today. Yo. Actually yesterday. And so what I like doing is just okay. like, so control F. I just like search bank. That's stupid bank. All right, cool. Like this one right here. So I have this court right here mm-hmm. and Jonathan, a bank suing him. Most likely that's a pre foreclosure right there. Oh, okay. And we're, I'm, I obviously missed it on the website or I don't know. If dot org. I'll show you. Okay. Like I like looking up bank TD bank. That, that's credit card debt lien most likely. And see if they let you like kind of do one off shoots and stuff like this, like American express versus Dustin Nelson. You want to look up, if Dustin Nelson in Knox County owns a house, right? Like just right. Boop, 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 boop. see that? And that boop, boop. guys, that's how they do the profiling on, um, uh, you know, your the people are behind on their credit card. And here's the next one: a state of bank payments. Let's see if a state a state does not pop up. Um, you can do service. I like doing service too. No. Financial services, that's a good one too. Okay. And with, with the financial services, probably going to be a pre foreclosure as well, right? Say again? When you're, when you're control effing services and it, you know, it shows up a financial service or something, that's, it's not going to be mechanically, it's rather going to be like a pre foreclosure type deal. Yeah. I'm kind of like food service. That's stupid. I'm not yeah. doing that. But like, they're, they're all pretty good. So literally, all I did was go here. 
have another one here too. And then this right here, just really quick, is going to be the future dockets. These are all the future dockets. Okay. And these are kind of stupid, but like, I, I mean, it's basic, like basic information, right? Right. And then just kind of like, dig deep, digging deeper in there. So let's go here. So this is the public part. They have to, by law, do it. They're trying to hide the privacy on like the custom service of like emailing it to you. Mm -hmm. And that is a service to a point. So you got to find like, so is it worth here, it or I not? I really clicked civil court dockets. No, wait. Okay. No, I went to... Circuit court and then... Hold on, where was it? I went to business? No. Probably government. Government. It literally just popped it up. Wait, wait a second. Oh, dockets right here. No, it's hold your horses. I gotta show you how I found that. Knox County, Tennessee. I I, I sure think I know how to get right? this like part, okay. but I don't. How did I pull that up? You just you gotta do a lot of playing around this stuff, and that's the problem. Thirty-two hundred counties across the country. Every site's different. It's, it's you think they had a one right. uniform site um, template, but. And and they're all changing very rapidly too. It's like I, I come back and it's like other than the uh the clerk's mugshot on all of them. I don't know if that, that's a requirement per county or what. So that pops up. Let you know who's ripping you off. Right. <laughs> all right here, civil session court dockets. Okay. Civil session. For example, get all. Oh wait, they get all these. And that's all I'm showing you because YouTube does not like yeah. this. So it's all good. You're gonna get it shut down, man. I get shut down. <laughs> I re-upload it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta get really resourceful, and you gotta kind of make a decision. Some people have to band aid and punch through because they're broke. I've been there. Sure. And sure. then when you get a couple deals, then you could switch over the service. You gotta decide what your time's worth. Some right. people don't have the money to pay for these services and they just got to go old school. And okay. whenever you go to a court in person, you're going to get a lot more information, but you got to drive, you got to deal with traffic and it's a pain in the butt. Some I've gone to some courts. They won't let you take a picture of docs like with cell phones, we all got cameras on them. They're like really strict about it in some places. So you guys got to learn your counties and most importantly, learn how to be resourceful with them because that I had no money to do this. I went court to court. I did it. I put five deals under my belt and then I switched to some paid services to help me uh, be more streamlined. So kind of make that decision, but you're on the right course. You can do it. It's actually showing anyone how to do it. Okay. So wait, and, and then I got two more questions for you guys real fast. Um, when you guys are, are speaking with sellers, um, you know, with acquisitions and then, um, but can you guys still hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, when you're speaking with sellers um, and acquisitions, or I guess marketing, and whatnot, um, and you know they're like, you know, they they're not sure that you're credible or whatnot. Um, do you guys have a website to show them, or like, how do you guys prove to them that you're credible? Because I, I haven't had much pushback when I when I do, you know, mention I can give them a cash offer and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. But I just recently uh, got a website set up uh, for my company just to kind of give a better, um, you know, I guess just show of it. So if they want to Google me and you know, kind of see what's going on there. Um, but do, do you guys use a website or, or do you guys just have a, um, a response to that? Oh, we have a Facebook. It's so the Facebook. best one is Facebook because they're going to look up Devin Hunt before anything. Right. And so if you have a Facebook and they look it up and you have pictures of, and videos of you as sellers, it's the best one you're going to have. It's easy. It's free. Well, when, when you tell people to go, go look at my website, and they're, they're going to read through all your articles of how not. They're going to look at Facebook it. and that's all they're going to care about. Number okay, two, cool. you know what it is? The second best credibility source, maybe first, it's your title company. Yep. Okay. You, and that's why we want you to set it up first because now you're getting third party um, verification of you and they're licensed, insured. And like if they vouch for you, I know it's hard in the beginning, you haven't done a deal, but like you have to go and establish a relationship with them. It gets you through it. Yes, sir. And listen, you can, like, I've tried credit, I've tried everything, dude. And I've tried expensive websites. And there's more than enough gurus that will sell you expensive websites. And at the end of the day, most people are going to go to social media. 
Right. And then um, want to know, hey, how do I know it's legit? Well, we're going to use a title company and they're insured. They're going to issue a title policy and they act as an intermediary, intermediary between myself and you. If you want, I'm happy to meet you over there. Or if you want to put you on a three-way call or if you want to call and just call them and verify, they'll back me up everything I've said here. Okay. Hands down. And most importantly, whenever I have somebody in queue, I have a good enough relationship with all my title companies that they'll pick up the phone and call them and go, listen, I know you had some questions about Rick. Is there anything we can help you there? They just want to know you're real. You're not, there's, there's a lot of scam artists, especially in wholesaling. Yeah. And you just got to calm down and you got to look them in the eye and just give them the truth. Give them the, give them the truth. If you don't have money and you don't know how to do it, either get a partner, get the credentials, meaning get it from your cash buyers, but be prepared. When they ask you a question, you go, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Then you destroy your credibility and you have to start all over with a, with a new seller. So if you prepare yourself, you'll be fine. And some of you that are a little more well set off type like that, you can pull your own credit and you can even go to your bank and get a, uh, anybody gives you a, uh, what do they call it? A, uh, when you get the letter from the bank, uh, a pre-approval. My dog got a pre-approval. They don't care. They just give you a general letter and just update it every 90 days. Yeah. And that nine times out of 10 will satisfy. I don't want to lie to people, but know your limitations, what you're doing. If you have no cash, no money, either get a partner, work with sellmyvapor.com or understand, work with a cash, work on your cash buyers list and let them know, Hey, I'm gonna get a proof of funds. That way I can get you deals faster. That's it. Okay. But if you don't prepare and you don't know the answer, then you've got to take ownership for it. So I don't want you to sacrifice a customer. So just make sure I gave you three perfect examples to help solve the credibility. But the websites, all this other stuff, by the way, nobody cares what your company's name is. I've had so many company names. I don't even care anymore. I sell Rick Ginn. That's it. That's all okay. I care about. I like it. Sweet. All right. And then um, last thing, um, I just sent out an offer uh, yesterday to a property. And they were asking before when, before I give them the offer, they they were asking four hundred thousand dollars for it. Um, no house on that side of town sells for four hundred thousand um, dollars, but they're so caught up on the acre of land that's that comes with the property. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, when I when they first told me that, I immediately went to explain to them why why I wasn't going to give them four hundred thousand dollars, and then gave you know give them the reasoning behind my offer. Um, and I I didn't really I, obviously I didn't really get a good response because I, I offered them like. I think like I offered them like eighty some thousand dollars um, in response to that, and that was that was like I definitely went for no. But I'm <laughs> I'm curious um, how 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 would you all would have how would you all have responded um, just kind of in the negotiation with it? Like, should it have been like you know how did you guys get to four hundred thousand dollars instead of just like I can't I, you know I'm, I'm not your buyer at four hundred thousand yeah. dollars, but da, 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 da. yeah, I already know what the problem is. You know what? What question am I about to ask you? I know you know my stuff. I've seen you on here before. I do. I do. Um, what What is the the number one pre qualifier of us working with people? Do they want to sell it? Are they motivated? No. no. I, so okay. So let's 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 just go with it because I this okay. is a great teachable moment. Okay. So do you want to sell? Hey Zach, you got a house you want to sell? He just said that though. I know. I got a house I want to sell too. The problem is, I want tippy tippy top dollar. What is the thing I'm missing? Why so there's, there's two basic qualifications you have to be a wholesaler to okay. get a good deal. Number one, your house has to be for sale. You got that part. And by the way, based on that, you go to MLS and there's probably 100,000 leads there for you. What's the second question that you have to pass for a pre-fall qualification for a wholesale deal? You know it. It's the biggest thing. Is there motivation? If there's no oh, motivation, the yeah, if there's, motivation, there's no yeah. offer. You're, you're just, you're trying to act as a realtor because you are never going to convince them to come from 400 grand down to 80. It's just, I go, listen, you have a great day. Let me know if anything changes and just move. Okay. Like don't fight the uphill battle. And that's where most of you get stuck. You fight fights. You're never going to win. And it exhausts you, frustrates you. If you put that same energy and used it to market, to motivate the tellers, you'll do much better. But we're, we're fighting for like retail and it's never going to happen. If you take that same effort and do it with motivated tellers. So once I know there's no motivation, you don't get an offer from my company, period. What's the point? It's just going to get rejected. Mm -hmm. That's not a go for no. That's for like, 
go get your, you, you know, what's kicked in. Cause I, I don't want you to do that. So right. focus on that. They have to have it. They, they, they've got to be willing to sell the house. And usually if they have a motivating problem, they're both built in together. And then from there, then you go through the process. But if you don't do that first one, you're going to have to deal with so many people. You're never going to make the cut. So I just okay. want you to remember it. Guys, you guys watching this, I want you to understand this. I don't care what guru, where you go, you go to freeholesaling.com. Understanding the house has to be for sale. There has to be some sort of motivation or it's not going to work on a wholesale deal, period. So we just have to understand that. Am I clear on that with you? Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. How many acres do they have? Um, it's, it's, it's one acre and the house hasn't been lived in in like three years. So it, it needs a lot of work. That's the years. acreage? No, I'm sorry. Say again. How many like so that's the extra acreage is one it has one acre. The yeah. how it's the house on one acre. To regular house is 0.25 acres. Right. So, so that 0.75 acres. It's not worth it. Show that me much. no the way I say, okay. Well, show me show me at least 0.75 acres that sold for 300 grand. It didn't. None, it right? Not on that side of town. You got it, dude. It's Just... Knoxville too. It's not New York City, right? Oh, no, no, no. Th this one's in Longview, Texas. Oh, the, wow. Oh, and all the wall <laughs> down there. I mean, well, that's even worse. It's got to be yeah, Texas. Yeah. Like, unless there's yeah. crazy mineral rights, man. Like, no, yeah, there's, 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 yeah, I don't think there's oil there either. Yeah. Like, what, so. well, Texas has plenty of land, man. Just like learn to let, like, honestly, I didn't get that lesson for years, by the way. I fought everybody. Well, so you just got to basically ask. Like, I thought you were talking about like eight or nine acres. Yeah. Oh, Lord. yeah. Like no. find vacant comps for, for for land and just say what is an acre of land going for, and then add that right. on top of her ARV if you want to get crazy. Okay. But nobody pays extra money for acreage if not like a crazy premium. They'll pay a little more. Yeah, not because land is only an expense to a point. Mm -hmm. not, land, there's land banking. I, I get that, but that's four hundred nuts. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Oh, and actually, I'll put on the market. I'm going to give them a call here in a little bit. Um, to good luck, man. See where that goes. But thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. All right. Okay. Have a good one, Doug. Good one. You too. I like it. Uh, James, what is up? You're muted. All right. There we go. Can you hear me now? Well, I'm Claire. How are you, man? What's going on? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Um, I jumped on earlier, and I, I sent an address hoping that you guys would uh, pull it up and run it. Um, I wanted to ask, so, you know, I'm fairly new. Have you ever came across and, you know, I understand condition motivation, but the property that uh, I'm working now, the, the it's uh, a tired landlord and there's a tenant in it and the tenant doesn't want to leave. They've been there for like nine years mm -hmm. and um, they don't want to ever leave. They're paying, um, uh, you know, it's like right around one to one and a half percent of the purchase price. Um, what was it purchased for? Uh, Sixty-four thousand. When? Um, it's. Uh, you mean the purchase price that the lady actually paid for it? Yeah, sixty-four thousand. When did she buy it? Uh, she All right, see you, James. She, and it was her grandma's property. The grandma passed away and, and willed it to her. Uh, she doesn't want to be a landlord. So she uh, called me and wanted to sell it. So I got it under contract. And now I'm trying to find a buyer that uh, just wants not like the person doesn't even want the property fixed up. They just want to stay in the house and just be left alone and just pay the rent. Um, yeah. Do you think it's a deal for a cash buyer when it's about one to one and a half percent of the actual price? Let me take this one. Buyer? Well, I got to understand what is, what are you talking about price? Like the house sold for 65,000? For some reason you're muted. That's a you problem. Can you, can you hear me? Not James, sure can you hear us? Can All you right. still hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, James. James, I'm going to kick you out and then just come back in, okay? Come back in. We got a bad connection. He'll come back in. Okay. What I'm trying to understand from him is this price thing. Where's the $65,000 price coming from? He Maybe. He doesn't know when it got sold either. 
We don't know what he had it under contract for. I don't know any of this stuff. So James, so there's two things here. Um, I get what the tenant wants and I want to stay, uh, 35 years old and I went away 160 pounds and I just, I want to stay there forever, but I can't. And that what the tenant wants is not your problem. Unfortunately, it's what the seller wants. So you got to look at the contract price. You have it on seller. Um, I get it. It was, it's much easier to sign with the tenant in there. Difficult tenants like this will make it harder to sell for a, gr a good value because they're, if they're renting at such a, I assume they have a ridiculously low rent. It's going to affect the value terribly. So the perfect buyer wants to buy that property vacant. So I just go back to the seller and say, listen, I will buy it with your tenant as is with everything in, but here's my price. It is, you have to take a discount because you're going to have to induce a cash buyer to take on this problem. How do you induce them? It's got to be with money. I don't want you dealing with like the tenant. The tenant, you cannot promise they're going to stay in there because it's a flat out lie. But it's not your job to kick them out and so do that. You sent me all the info on here. I'm waiting for them to come back in. But so I just saw the property here. I don't want to give up his address. No. This doesn't have the info on it. Good. Okay. So we can go through this. Basically, this is the kind of. He's just trying to wholesale it with a bad tenant. And bad tenants deserve deep discounts because the seller doesn't want to deal with it. So if I inherit well, a property. The seller doesn't own it, right? She no, said no, she got it. No, no, don't own it. But Look they act place. like they own it. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know what it they costs to it. park a truck like that? So that's, look at that. That's look at 500 that. a month just nasty. to park the truck. And so this is in a very bad part of town. He's not living there though. Well. It's in a very bad part of town. Yeah. So it's not worth an insane amount. We got window units. That's rough. You you got to get a really low price so on it. My my thought is you got to get this thing for under 50. Because dealing with that tenant, you're going to have to sell it with them or worse, you're going to have to um, kick them out. This is in Florida. Yeah. Kick these people out. But the homeowners usually don't, the sellers don't have the, they're never going to enforce a uh, eviction because it costs money with an attorney and you can't evict someone out of a property you don't own. So that's the challenge. You have to sell it with the tenant. It's the only way to get it done. How do you do that? It has to be a severe discount price. So whatever price you have it under James, I would go back and ask for a discount saying your tenant is James, so unreasonable. The... Go ahead. Is he there? Go ahead. Click the button to hop back in James. Uh, we'll go through this house with him though. I think you gotta be under 50 on this thing. Yeah. I haven't even seen the inside. Listen, she doesn't want it. She inherited it. She knows how bad the property is, how difficult the tenant is. These properties you gotta buy cheap and you gotta move them cheap. You're not gonna make a ton of money because a cash buyer is going to see all the problems you do and they know there's a cost to get that tenant out of there. So I don't know where he's getting 65,000 on. Nah, we didn't get the, all the information. The, well, I'm looking at the information now. Yeah. Um, it last sold 1998. The, the, this purchase price is fake. So I don't see any public information saying it's got for 65 because that's worth way more than things even were. Um, so I'm just popping this up. There's no way it's sold for 65. I think the tenants, seller might be lying to you because I'm looking at this property right here. There's no sold information at all. Last sold date on public records, 1998. That's it. So there's no 65. This person's lying to you. Go get the um, facts on it. And you you got to be under 50. Easy. All day, it, day. It's a rough one, James. And remember, you need to sign it with a, with a. And I'm looking at the comps they're, they're It's, it's bad. It's just like, um, this is like four peers. Like the Listen, I've dealt like with properties like you just, you got to buy them cheap and you got to sell them cheap. Yeah. You're not going to hit a home run, but like, if you can make money on it, that's fine. But the tenant, man, you do oh. not want to deal with. Okay. Oh, he's cleaning up. What a nice guy. Yeah. But he's probably, he's probably got it between, I, I assume way under a thousand bucks and someone's going to want to clean it up and get market rates. And they, you have to get them out of there because you're never going to get them up to market rates. Cause that's why he wants Excuse to hold on to it. That's I can rough. smell this place. Okay. Dude, I'm just analyzing this. Uh, there's nothing to, like. Look at this thing. All right, so just when you. I don't care a, about the pictures. Well, okay, but so for some people that are looking at this, they got to know what to look out for, right? Or you could look at the outside. So the plumbing looks good here. This place smells nasty. So just look, just looking through a house like this. Where's the other part of the couch? <laughs> exactly. It's um, in the truck. 
Air Jordan sticker, nice. That flooring's all mad. There might be a little leak here. Oh, just Lord. be careful. They see this right here. So I'm telling you, I would you gotta just have a quick it's look. The and beauty say, of a rental property. So like when this. I look at properties like this, the plumbing's all messed up here. See that wood creaking? It's definitely a leak. The subfloor is all stained. Yeah, that's nasty. Got a bucket in there from a leak. Window unit. I, I'd be now we're at. He's a I, so FYI. You see the headset right there? He's definitely a truck driver. Yeah. Just so you guys know the difference. Oh, oh lord. Okay. Guys, just because the tenant wants to stay in there, the outcome of the property is always dictated by the seller and oh you. And if the tenant has taken advantage of the situation, maybe it's not to their fault. Your problem, if you're going to buy a property, that the, the idea is to push it to a higher and better use. Not, okay, I'll keep you there. And well, none of us, that's not our problem. The other thing, James, is um, you want to share the lease information. You better make sure. It is a month to month because a lot of these people are really good at going and getting like brand new one year leases and you're stuck with them. So um, hopefully that helps with you. Listen, I, I bought properties like this when I started through some creative financing and they were still difficult even with creative financing. I'm just reading this. Tennis stoffel. I Most likely it's going to be a, like a month to month. A lot of times there's not even a lease in place. Yeah, I would. Um, but Florida, it's relatively easy to evict people, but I don't. I'd say for, I, I want to get this thing locked up for like 25, 30. I want to be under 50 on that one all day. Every it's, day. it's just, it's a lot of work, James. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, let's see. So what is land banking? Land banking is when someone buys a piece of land. And then they'll just keep the land because it keeps appreciating. Now, people think you can do this with like a 2000, you pay two grand for half an acre in the middle of nowhere. And that it doesn't work like that. Mm -mm. It's like buying a house or it's like buying a piece of land in like downtown Dallas, like a, like a quarter acre lot like that, that will appreciate kind of like a stock to a point it would go very well. The, the main issue here is you got to be in the right area. Problem is most people like that lady thinks her acreage in Longview, Texas is worth a lot. It's not like just have when, when I have a house that's worth 200 grand, it's a, on a quarter acre lot. Mm -hmm. Will you pay? And then someone has a house that's two acres, but it's the same house. Is it worth it? Would I pay an extra 50 grand for that? It's not worth it for me. Um, and most people aren't willing to wait, wait, bleh, not willing to pay a premium because that extra acreage isn't like that insane. And just that's honestly what I felt. Let's see here. And cash buyers don't care. They can't make money on land. Unless you you could park do stuff like that, but it's most likely not. Let's see here. What's up? What's up, guys? Freelancing.com. Make sure you go there. Let's see here. Um, see. Numbers don't lie. One hundred percent. That's true. Matthew has a great question here. This is a great, insightful one. Um, do you guys suggest for beginners to learn and incorporate novations or stick to traditional wholesaling? Hmm. Uh, never do a novation, please. Especially as a beginner. It, it's just... not even not as an expert. No novations. Novation, you're replacing one contract for the other. So if you don't know how to write one contract, how are you going to replace it with another one? And you need to go get a legal team and you got to get a transaction coordinator. Listen, don't do it. it. It just, I'm telling you the. It's, it's wholesaling with extra steps the, the, and it's being a guru yeah, with extra the, steps. The fad is dying because it, it's, it was just a quick little gimmick and it's been exposed and it, it has nothing to do with wholesaling. So I'm not going to teach it. He's not going to teach it. And I advise against a beginner because it's, it's, they say it's not risky. It's very risky from a legal standpoint. I get it from a money standpoint. It's not, but from a legal standpoint. I don't think so. Talk to a lawyer if you have any questions. That is going to be your best person to. The risk uh, reward's not there. I, I, I'm not even going to mention it. And now I'm getting questions like, what's innovation? It's not even worth talking about. Ignore it. Don't do it. it we don't do it. So if I don't do it, if I thought it was great, I would be deep into it. I just, I know little tricks to the trade. These fads come and go all the time. It's a trick, it's a legal maneuver. And 
Can, can someone do it? Yeah, but like I don't do it. I won't waste my time it's a way doing of selling it. Or coaching. It's not yeah. wholesaling. It's it's like a little cheat. So uh, there's people that make money doing it, but like they've been doing this 21 years. That's my question to them. I would avoid innovation, guys. If you are wanting to wholesale, but you want to make more in the deal, just fix and flip it. The, the problem is the innovation is a way to squeeze extra money out of a deal that the seller wants too much, mm -hmm. but they also want it quick in cash, right? And, yeah. And, and, and that's the problem. So you, you've, you've got to make a promise and a commitment to someone that's got challenges. And if you don't meet those expectations, which you have no idea what the property is going to sell for, you're always going to be the blame. And by the way, they, they can back out at the last minute. I'm sorry. The homeowner has rights. You're also talking about the risk. The risk like, is massive. If you whiff on the deal, the renovations go bad, a bad partner, you're screwed. Yeah. But at least when you flip a house at the right price, if you're screwed, you can still get another person in and flip it and you have enough equity in play. You don't have any equity if there's innovation. That's the problem with it. And, and you, have to record, you have to record legal documents that require a, really a lawyer. And so if the deal doesn't work out, which more than half innovations don't, you have to unwind all this stuff. And most of it, you don't even have the training to do it. You don't even know what you recorded. And whenever you, the, the whole point of public documents is there is a liability when you record something. So if a bank records something to my house and they don't have the proper paperwork, it's defamation of title and you, you can go back and, and be compensated from them. You can't do it. So I don't want you to do it. Do a wholesale contract. Doesn't work out. You get out of it. You don't record anything. Everyone's safe and everyone's happy when it works out. I agree. So guys, avoid innovations. Go to freehealthscene.com to learn how to wholesale real estate step-by-step -step for free. We'll see you soon. This is Zach and signing out. Rick